How's it going guys? Welcome back to Soul Days. Wow, are we gonna be okay? Is crypto gonna make it? Well, let's take a look. Bitcoin. All right, well, we've been charting this out for about two weeks already. Nothing's really changed. Um, I added some more clear Elliott Wave drawouts for you guys so you can see a little bit better about what we've mapped out earlier couple of possibilities on this side but overall if it was sea leg on a three on the larger term three we've already eaten into wave one which is part of the requirement we want a little bit more of a take into one closer or more than 10 percent but i think we got enough for c it's not going to ch uh, always chart perfectly however if we are looking for a five to confirm then it's possible we look a little bit deeper into the wave one back in 2017. However, more or less, you guys know what's happening here. And um, I believe we're on the, we're on the uh, lip of the bowl here. And if you look at our candlesticks, we're treading out really nicely on the behavior lines that we're always, we've been looking at. Um, about a week ago, we noted that we'd likely be bouncing from here 21.5 to 17.5. And that's looking exactly like what we've been doing for the past week. Uh, we've been struggling to keep this, toe this line at 19,000 about between 19 and 20. 19.9 is what this resistance is calling. However, the lower end, right? We, ha we have it mapped out for uh, 12,500. Is it necessary to go there? Um, can't really say on that. However, our trend angle has been keeping us inside pocket really nicely. So let's get a different look here. So reason why we believe that we'd be bouncing wrong in 20, 21.5 and 17.5 is based on the, the resistance of the um, speed resistance of how the ratio was working out with the Elliott five. So it doesn't really make too much of a difference. We're seeing overflap. We're getting a lot of signs here. Do we need to confirm this? I don't think it's necessary, but maybe somebody wants to take us there. One more look, same thing. Cleaner look. So on our map here, You can probably get a couple of indications on where supports from the past have kept us high, but also where they could possibly fail. So if we're gonna go here, um, you'd look to wanting to hold fast at 16,000. It's quite possible that we touch 16 and um, got some really interesting information on this. Really might provide some clarity as to where we are right now with Bitcoin. But same thing we've been talking about here on this show. We are rounding the corner. Um, if this is mapping out the way we've been um, charting it, way we, the way we've been approaching it, it's an interesting time, maybe very exciting time. So get ready, um, pack your bags for a journey. Looking at the Luna Classic, Classic is just uh, it's on fire. There's volume, there's a lot of buyers. It's not just that small uh, amount of few hands pumping it. Uh, people are getting excited. There's a strong narrative behind it. Most of the ecosystem, Terra ecosystem is intact. A lot of the platforms that are still on Terra would need to remint their tokens to, you know, to stay on, to issue more activity. But overall, Terra Station Wallet works like it, just like it used to. All on-chain data is still able to get pulled really nicely. You can see that from the burn calculator. So very interesting times ahead for Luna Classic. 
Um, lot to look forward to. Quite possibly some NFTs coming up. And could they could they successfully merge the old uh, NFT bridge that existed originally on the Terra, the original Terra network? We'll see. Uh, just a quick quick little glimpse there. Just smoking everybody's math out of the water. Um, you know, a lot of people, you've been seeing a lot of Twitter math <laughs> and a lot of Twitter naysaying about um, people claiming it's going to go to a dollar. You know, it doesn't need to go to a dollar for it to be something. Um, whether it does or doesn't isn't as meaningful as what's happening right now with the Luna Classic um, revamp. So the community continues to get stronger and stay together. That's what you like to see. On the soul side, we're seeing more strength again, but we could ex be expanding out into a trading flat here, uh, but it may not be exactly that bearish. So if we continue to expand though, we might exhaust some bullishness. However, we are seeing on the Bitcoin side um, that if Bitcoin is an indicator, Solana is gonna lag a little. So with the pull down on the Bitcoin and the recent pull up um, for Solana, you know, we were at a uh, high end of $33 yesterday, but we're back down to 31. We could see, we could see some absolute, <laughs> some absolute glory, glory days up ahead, but it's likely that we are still looking for some, some kind of confirmation, or at least the market is. And we do see some uh, other lines to tread a little bit further down here. We do have some off the chart type of spikes on volume here. So we're gonna need to we're gonna need to buffer this somehow, right? And we're gonna still need more confidence entering the market. On the long longer view, got a lot of got more than enough overflap here from past support. However, it did take us down one step and we haven't We've been um, holding really nicely. And that, that actually could, it's less of an indicator that we need to go there and more of an indicator that we, we, won't, we won't need to because there's enough, there's enough strength here. Um, however, with Bitcoin, we could see a possibility of a breakdown. And um, so we'll, we'll be watching that closely, right? But we're holding this line and we've been following this for more than two weeks already. These are the same lines we've drawn out quite a while ago. So we've been bouncing around here on our leads really nicely. Corrective market working out. Um, behavior staying pretty clear. It's a universal thing, I guess, right? All right. So on to some news and on to some uh, Bitcoin news. So... With Bitcoin, some massive liquidations recently, right? Past 24 hours, we've seen near half a billion in liquidations on both sides, long and short. Interesting thing is, when does that usually occur? So I took a look because price action has been kind of interesting, right? We, we, we looked at the charts we more or less have a really strong indication about if if it charts out the way behavior will take us naturally um we have a we have a we're growing a clear understanding of where bitcoin is headed and so with the with this liquidation news i thought it was really interesting timing so i i took a look at what happened in the past with bitcoin and liquidations and how that correlated to price so you see here in 2019, December 28, 2019, there were some really large amounts of liquidations on both sides, which resulted in a massive slump, but a quick recovery on Bitcoin. On OKX, BitMEX, near $400 million worth of liquidations, despite price being almost a third of what the price is now. Fast forward to... December 2020, that was 2019 in December. This is December 17th, 2020. Massive liquidations on both sides. See here, almost a billion in liquidations 
in 24 hours. Let's check coin market cap. So our first one was in 2019, December. Let's go back to 2019, December. What's price? So interesting, price was down here. And you see in the latter part of December, right around, right after this article, December 28th, massive liquidations the day before. And then you see this huge pump up here, starting on December 29th about. Now let's fast forward to what we just looked at. December, late December, massive liquidations and massive pump right after. Pull back again and we're still moving. Are there more articles? Are there more instances of this dump before a pump? Let's take a look. February 2021. Massive $2 billion liquidations on both sides. $879 million in, in one day. That article's from early February. Liquidations happen right around here, late January. Have a pullback and then a massive pump here. From 33 up to 50. Almost 60. 57. Just a straight shot. Moonshot. Oh, so this is like this moonshot comes right after massive liquidation, two billion in ma uh, liquidations. Let's take another look. Right, more liquidations. Eighty-one thousand traders liquidated on an average of two thousand each person. About December twenty twenty. That was the beginning of December 2020, December 1st, that article was written. So we're going to look for the end of January 2019. I mean, uh, November, sorry. November, end of November 2020. So right here, right around Thanksgiving time, right after. We have a little bit of a dump here. Massive liquidation. And then you start to load your rocket ship with some fuel. Look at that rocket fire. Boom straight up straight to mars look at that boom then we pull back again more liquidations dumping then boom so i mean if you guys want to get wagged <laughs> you want to get thrown to the ropes and then clotheslined it's all choreographed right wwe i don't know is it it's phantom of the opera but you know, interesting. So that's where we're at right now, right? Just today, massive liquidation. Not as crazy as some of these in the past. So, I mean, and we're at a higher price. And we've arguably built up more of a more of a bottom, uh, hopefully, in this time. And we got crazy, uh, crazy financial buying, institutional buying coming in. It's like massive hands, people that don't normally sell. You know, BlackRock, JP Morgan, we have leaders in financial, you know, uh, financial circles like uh, David Rubenstein, who buy and sell and trade crypto on their free time, you know, with their personal money. We talked a lot about that on this show, uh, you know, what kind of uh, marketing leads, leads price action and what lags it. So let's take a look at the, some metrics on Bitcoin here. So exert exchange rate reserve is increasing overall overall we see a kind of a mountain slide here exchange net total way up 24 hours and that's because of liquidation so it's exchanges are taking in uh taking back in a massive amount of bitcoin active addresses staying steady we actually see a little bit maybe you can consider a little bit of an uptick transactions increasing um, so exchange flow is is occurring on both sides we, we mentioned yesterday we want to see a little bit of this premium back off. And so it's actually increasing and that's that's the opposite of what we wanted to see. But this is a this is more of an example of where we're bowling at, right? On the lit. Funding rate, funding rate getting active again. Very, very interesting times, huge spikes in liquidation, takes on buys on KuCoin alone, you can see the battle. But Longing, longing is starting to stretch really, really deep into shorts lately. So that's a bird's eye view, right? You want to read, read the tea leaves a bit. On the, on the larger side, even more bird's eye, more omni, omnipotent view here. Um, foreign governments continue, continue to look at digital assets, digital currency, 
And so struggling, struggling economies around the world, like the ones in Turkey, Lira has been having problems for quite a while. Uh, we saw what happened with Greece. So, so no surprise here that just continuing to build, build its space for crypto. Solana Utes, really interesting the way the raffle went down. Um, we do see some strong activity on secondary for Utes, min orbs. Um, talk a little bit more about that at the end. But overall, really interesting how the market has responded to the Utes. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna focus on Bitcoin really. We'll continue to look at Solana charts. I do have the ISO, ICO pre-sale that I've been wanting to talk about, but I'm still doing more research on that before I present it to you guys. Um, we talked about Burrito Boys and or several other collections that were on Elixir NFT.io, which is a floor maximizer or a floor AAMM. Very, very interesting, um, very surprising utility. I love how certain NFT projects are really making the most of the Solana ecosystem. Um, so it's really surprising to see a project like Brutal Boys um, at the price level it is. However, if you look at the collections on here, you can kind of get an idea of where what's conducting across this um, sort of, these sort of platforms and with this sort of utility, you know, we have entry levels and it seems to ladder up here. So it could be, it could be by design but wouldn't Burrito Boys holders like to see the design kind of incorporate some of them? Because I think uh, Burrito Boys on the bridge split. So if you look at bridge split here, which can access the radium pool for the Burrito Boys pool, you have a little bit more um, ways to interact with the radium pool on Burr and Soul. So I'll show you guys this radium pool that I'm talking about. So it apparently this it looks like elixir nft is vaulted the collection on burrito boys anyway is vaulted in radium which is a solana pool so if we search here we'll find the bird coin which is belonging to the burrito boys collection so this pool can be accessed through bridge split app app.bridgesplit.com and you can interact with this pool in different ways so very very unique and interesting ways this utility is uh far and away from a lot of other projects on solana so very very um curious as to why there isn't more information on uh, burrito boys or more um talk about it out there but that's what we're doing here right so you can deposit a burrito which will fractionalize it I have one in my wallet right now. Um, you deposit this, you can take a percentage on it, right? I can tweak this and you'll see the resulting payout based on the fractions. So when I go to a platform like Elixir, that means that that NFT was fractionalized. So it's available for me to buy. It'll interact with the contract, which works off of the ME floor and it'll counteract the floor. Based on the Burrito Boys floor price. ABD, ABC DJ is just absolutely melting faces, man. I papered that one, I guess, huh? Yeah, we gotta change our habits, guys. If you're you're out there listening, trying to, you made it through that apocalyptical uh, Solana stretch, getting rugged and dumped on constantly um at least i know i have to so i definitely um sold those abc gens too early but nice if you guys are holding or um, or flipping it right now or we're gonna hold looking for the long right on but um so here's the burrito boys floor is at 0.12 we see elixir 0.09 so you buy one here the fractionalization is incorporated in the floor price, so you pay about 0 0.089 and 0 0.001 will go to the pool and you'll get a uh, share of the transaction amount back in burrito coin, in burr coin. And that'll go straight to your wallet. You get about like five burr right now. 
for each transaction. And you can sell it on ME, possibly if there's arbitrage, right? See 0 0.12, 0 0.09 buy there. Not very much, but you'll get back if that's what's something that you wanna do. You probably wanna wait for this floor to rise up so you get more of a split. Um, you can do the same thing in reverse. So if uh, Elixir's got a higher floor and ME's got a lower floor than Elixir, you buy 0 0.09 on ME and you can sell it on Elixir for 0.16 or something like that. And um, by doing so though, in the opposite direction, you'll, you'll be depositing that burrito um, into the radium pool. All right, so bridge split, very way, cool way interact with radium pools on NFTs platform like elixir is working off of it bridge bridge split also has a platform where you can swap and check floor indexes on nft collections same collections more or less because I, I believe that these are the ones that are pooled and fractionalized so now let's jump to magic eden wow so interesting reaction um you know i've been doing these nft um uh, floor checks, um, TA on NFTs and stuff. And I, I, I was really interested in doing it right before the Utes raffle um, to kind of take a snapshot of where the market was before and sort of document what happens on these massive um, or really, really hype mints and what they do to the market. So really cool to see in a way, I'm not sure if it's totally related to Utes or people who uh, opposed to the Utes pumping, pumping other projects and pumping uh, Magic Eden in um in contrast to the youth raffle or protest rather um but we did see cowboys you know we did have that mapped out to stretch out a little bit but we see a little bit of a trace retrace to 0.5 now um across the board to some but abc is just absolutely pumping that double overnight just about so we're at 42 so for abc's that's cool awesome i sold mine too early too but but grateful, got some um, good trading liquidity. So entered some other projects. I still think D Monsters got a really good team behind it. Um, so we'll see what happens with this, but the floor is actually, you know, really just struggling. And um, one thing you guys want to take a look at, if you're a little bit new, do you want to take a look at what's happening with the holdership? So a lot of the time you'll see you know, just a handful of holders holding a lot of the supply. I'm not gonna speculate too much on what that's amounting to, you know, but a lot of times it could be, I'm not saying it's part of this project, but the team itself. And um, they're just looking to make money off of this and maybe they have no faith in the actual project or what they're building. But not saying that's what's happening here, probably not. They turned them, they made the mint free, which is also an indication that that might be happening here because they need to make money somehow but I don't think so again. However, you know, this is clearly, in my opinion, what's holding back this project. So until this, until these holds start moving a little bit, you see here, this guy's got nearly 500, sold almost 64, but only for this amount. So clearly waiting for the price to go up, and then he's gonna sell on you. This person hasn't done anything with it. Likely not showing any activity because this was off of 200 got off of mint. But it'd be unfortunate if that person received it prior to mint. So those are some of those uh, vagities, I guess you could say, that really hold back projects and floors. So if you guys are holding out the monsters out there, um, you know, something to take note of. Uh, Kita ETH just absolute moon too. That's crazy. And I, <laughs> again... So way too early on this, well, although I really love the project, I just definitely didn't think that the floor would surge like this. I thought I'd have an opportunity to get back in, but uh, maybe I will in the future. But I like what Hida ETH is doing. Super interesting platform. We talked about it a couple of times or more on the show. So really cool for you, uh, for these guys that are um, in this right now. And I think that it's got a lot, lot to offer this space. Heroes of Astron, uh, I heard some talk about D-God holders or D-God team 
potentially taking over this project. Not sure how the transition went or if it happened at all or if it's gonna happen. But Heroes of Astron, pretty cool because you got, uh, I was looking at the alpha section and I liked it. I liked um, Big Biceps, the way he lays his, um, the way his, he lays out his explanations and stuff for floors and projections and stuff. So shout out there. Um, Kikiverse, yeah, we've been talking about Kikiverse. I thought it was a really, really cool play um, on NFT, outside NFT ecosystem. Really, really interesting and nice art to, to boot. Um, appealing across all, um, across the board, so pushing pushing one eighth floor there. I mean, uh, one sole floor. Pretty sweet. Lurkers pulling back. Um, they got a separate Discord coming out on the techno on their AI version of the of the uh, collection. But Lurkers team staying sticking in there, staying solid. Can't pass through a lot of stuff. You know, we talked about them a couple times prior to mint. I mean, uh, post mint and. Uh, they're gonna hanging in there, so I think if you if you're looking at lurkers and you like the art, you know, right around now or maybe a little bit if you're patient, um, there could be room to grow for lurkers, especially if we're entering a market that is looking on the um, the come up. So, and Maleficus just brewing, it's brewing, same as lurkers, just brewing, boiling, fizzling, or not, <laughs> fe uh, fest festering. <laughs> fermenting I'm gonna make you intoxicated yeah masked ape just uh you know if this is it if those two if this is gonna provide a roadmap for floor for these two this could be this could be um showing you the way there yeah so nice mice kind of kind of pull back a little bit but but you know 0.5 is really really good so a lot of a lot of room there and uh, Ordinum just also just mooning almost three soul now. Damn. I mean, we looked at it not too long ago. It was 0.4. Ordinary Soul, I really like this project. Really love this art. Um, the creator, Mayor, stuck around. Really, really, um, just really present and um, really cordial, really nice to talk to. And a uh, good, good leader, good community leader. Really nice art, pretty loyal um collecting based so yeah i need to get back in i i lost my ordinary souls i lost them it was one of the most <laughs> it was super painful to lose my ordinary souls on a train but i'll be back in uh muba yeah this one's interesting it it was doing extremely well before the originalis uh mint pulled back super hard and has been just stagnating but the team is still still been consistent still working on some things so i'd like to see a nice bounce back from them um could see we could see another floor you guys could be looking forward to another floor because they got some um things related to mutations and they're going to be implementing a little bit more of the spaceship collections in a, in a bit and we're all you know i know that we're all um waiting for that country club so I'd like to see how that plays out. Um, nice art too, right? Other world, you know, I caught I caught this moon, uh, watching everybody else go to Mars. It's nice to uh, be in one, and uh, you know these are aliens. So maybe we'll skip universes here and just absolutely, uh, absolutely fly. Casinos looking really nice. Penguins, still, still staying right, right and ready. If you need to get in, I'm still, I'm still trying to stack up some liquidation too to, to, uh, to, to make, to make a better move into penguins. Pixel builders talked about them. Discord side. Pixel puffs, I'm still not in, but still watching. Art only, but pretty um. Something similar to Ordinary Soul. Good fan base there. Nice leader. Although I haven't really had any, or zero rather, um, interaction with the community leader on Pixel Puffs, but I, I see that person engaging with others, and so it seems nice. Sentry is doing well. Again, sold a little too early on that one, but uh, made that trade and got some good liquidity to move around with. But Sentries, I, I really like it. I did 
kind of foresaw a different uh, reaction from the market a little bit. So, but nice to see centuries and it makes sense. This is a utility, strong utility play and arguably um, interacting with Solana ecosystem in a very uh, constructive and positive way. So nice. Shrimps, shrimps too. I need to get back in. Um, head onlys, mostly skulls, but I think head onlys will offer a lot to new users. Uh, we're gonna start to see some different aesthetic trends popping up as new users start to come in, trickle in. So dead, firing. Um, still, still churning through though. Still churning through some uh, floor sell-offs here and there, and some buy-ins. So, Wag Me Bros. Um, coming off the wake of the Terra, Terra dump. Um, I was just interested in Wag Me Bros. You know, based off of that, one of the first Terra. Terra NFTs to move to Solana or move to another chain. So a bit historic in a way and um, not sure how that translates, but traditionally in NFTs, you see on ETH, you know, historical NFTs are uh, extremely meaningful in the long run. So yeah, more or less a rundown. I'm not really in some of these projects, but uh, I usually note if I am, you know, Solaris, I used to be a lot of these I got, I lost. Um, positions in uh against my will <laughs> but I'm working it up guys we're gonna get back in and solaris i thought was a really uh, nice way to display your entities if that's gonna be meaningful to you and uh it definitely will when we start seeing strength in the market uh, stronger strength in the market you know people are gonna want to splurge out a little bit and you're gonna want to show off your stuff so solaris is a crazy floor right now for what it offers and how good it looks Super Frog, I don't know, be careful guys, the guy's talking about bowing out on this one, but the art is really nice. I like it, so, I mean, hopefully he sticks around. I know people are trying to keep him keep him around by keeping him engaged with the community, which is cool. Sigi Neko is just keeps pumping and dumping, but at some point it'll stick. We've been, able, we've been angels too, been, I've been seeing it as low as 0.7-ish. Uh, been meaning to get in. I think it might be le influencer led, but I'm not going to name exactly who because I need to look more into it. But it uh, you know, might be somebody we, we all more or less know of. Zero Heroes saw a nice pullback, 0.3. Um, Zakido could be a good entry also, but could fluctuate still with some um, needing to shuff shuffle through some some holdings. BFGs continues to grow off the sports books. Meta. That's sort of happening under under the seams on the Solana NFT ecosystem. But yeah, yeah, guys. So quick and easy one, but action packed, right? Info packed. So looking forward to seeing some of these new plays work out like this art on this one. Interested to see where other world goes with the collaborations, the pretty awesome collaborations that they've got building up, um, you know, with ABC and stuff like that. And um, yeah. So, all right, guys. We will back, be back tomorrow. We'll take a look at some uh, new coins that we don't really talk about here. And I'm working on presenting that ICL to you guys. I still want to make sure that. Um, do some good research on it make sure it's something that i'm sharing that that works and will work uh but we don't really <laughs> we don't really know that and we can't chart it out yet but all right so have fun stay safe we'll see you on the next one thank you bye